Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look back at that big homecoming victory over Washington State, preview next week's trip down to the desert to take on Arizona, and have a couple of special features for you as well. Uh, coach, uh, it was quite a performance. First of all, uh, you have a very nice coat. I do want to mention yeah. that. Uh, a very good performance. You had the normal cast of characters, O'Neal, your receivers, Willie Tate, uh, Bannison, and Jones. But Dino Filia going both ways, Juan Shedrick back in the lineup, uh, a lot of people in your defensive line contributing that hadn't played a lot of football. Quite a, a, a good team effort in this one. Well, we needed all the help we could get. Uh, the bodies are starting to get a little sore and scarce out there, and uh, a lot of people that haven't played uh, in areas they're used to playing or playing as much uh, stepped up and did a great job. And this is the second year, Todd, of our... Uh, induction to Hall of Fame on a Friday night before homecoming and uh, so far we're 2-0 on, on, the, on the Saturday afterwards so it, uh, I'm glad that we could bring all those enshrinees back and, and have their weekend complete with a, with a football victory. Oregon won the toss of the coin, elected to defer its decision until the second half and so Washington State will take the football to start the game. Tommy Thompson booting it away to the goal line to Torrey Hunter. Chad Cota meets him at about the 25-yard line. Falls forward to the 27. Put your setup shop there. Good start for your defense here, Coach. When we sprint out, Chad Cota does a great job while being held, containing the quarterback. T.J. Cabrera comes from the inside to finish the job. And you see, as we go to the right of the screen here, it's a run all the way. Chad Cota turns off two blockers, grabs a hold of the leg, actually should be better to get the tackle, but he, as he pulled out, Cabrera's there to meet him. So on a third down and eight play, the Grenier, his second pass of the game, a little of the screen, and nothing doing. Try the wide receiver screen, Eugene Jackson read it very well, and Romeo Bannison came from the inside to make the play. So Brian, Brian Brown on the punt return here, takes it up inside and gets about 11 yards for a very good field position. So Oregon has the ball. The next play we see is a third and 17. This is after a holding penalty and a real nice job by Danny O'Neill stepping up into the pocket, avoiding the rush and finding Dameron Ricketts coming across for the first down. Dean of 21. Big third down conversion, because this is third and I think, uh, what, 16, Todd? 17, and, uh, yeah. 17 yards and uh, excellent protection. He stepped up in there and found Ricketts breaking free across the middle. And Ricketts takes it up for the key first down. So we move on into this series, and the next play is a second and 10 from the Washington State 18-yard line after a personal foul on the Cougars. This was a play that you tried to run a lot in this game, or at least the, the idea of screens and uh, try to get that Cougar defense moving one way or another. That one didn't go, so Thompson comes in, knocks it through from 36 yards out. Coach, for the eighth consecutive game, your team scores first. Yes, that's. Uh, I don't want to change that trend. Uh, I'd like to change this trend, though. After we do score, we seem to give up a good kickoff return. There's Dino Filia, Tommy Thompson. Uh, hurt his shoulder a little bit on that play, and I was told that he was probably going to be out for the game at that point. They took his pads off. Miss a tackle on a little quick hitch pass there, and to give up way too much yards on a, on a four or five yard pass. All we have to do is make the tackle. We let Washington State back in with a, with a good drive here. Nice play there by Alex Molden, who kind of re-injured himself on that play and didn't play much the rest of the game. A uh, little swing pass out there. We're not out there in man coverage like we should have been, and uh, they pick up the first down. So it's first and 10, 16 yard line, loss of two. Big male, he just kind of rolls into him, and uh, great job by Romeo Bannison. Swims to the center, reacts back to the pulling lineman, just throws his body, if you will, in and makes the tackle for a loss. A loss of two, but unfortunately on the next play, second and 12 from the 18 yard line. You talked about this, DeGrenier, this is, uh, you know, we have him contained on the front side. Our back side just doesn't come up where they're supposed to be. We give up contain. He makes a fine run for the touchdown. And we talked about uh, you getting the first score of each game. It's the first time you've trailed in the first quarter. Oh, it is. It is. And uh, maybe that's what we need to do so we can score a lot in the fourth quarter. I don't know. I think it's uh, like 70, uh, 71 to 14 your advantage in the first quarter. Ernest Jones gets credit for a sack there, uh, running. Uh, the Grenier out of bounds, a good containment on both sides that time. 
Ricky Whittle in the game, takes it up inside with a good hard run. With a swing pass. Well, we get a lucky break here. Uh, the Washington State Cougar, as he picked up the ball, his right foot was out of bounds. You get the first down, you go right back to Willie Tate, 15 yards there, and another first. Good protection on this play. This is a zone read. Willie Tate just sits down and finds the hole in the zone. You can see him right there, we'll spin back to the outside. Takes a couple, two or three guys to get him down. After no gain on first down, second down and 10. Draw play. Shedrick gets a decent block. Burwell picks up a big gain. Again on the replay, you see Shedrick go up inside, get a block on Childs. And Burwell breaks it outside. Good run by Sean Burwell. And that was the final play of the first quarter. Oregon mounting a drive. Washington State leading it 7-3. When we come back, we'll have the second quarter highlights as the Ducks regain that advantage. We're ready for the second quarter. Oregon has the football mounting a drive. In fact, on first down, the, would have had a touchdown had the pass been completed, but this is second down. Screen pass back to uh, Ricky Whittle. It's a good block by uh, Eric Barnes and... Uh, Probably wouldn't have had to run over anybody here if uh, Kristen McLemore gets a block instead of looking for a lateral. Uh, he's got to work a little bit more on his uh, consistent blocking to the whistle. You see McLemore come across his face there, just get out of the way and say, lateral, lateral the ball, lateral the ball. But Ricky decides to run over Greg Byrne and take it into the end zone and uh, gets a nice touchdown reception. We saw more of a Ricky Whittle of old in this game because he uh, seems to be a little more healthy. He is, uh, I think, recovered. I just hope he, he did have problems with back spasms. Nice job by the defense on that play. Uh, on the replay, you can see a good uh, job by David Massey coming in on the blitz. Gets help from DJ Cabrera. Uh, just a real nice job of shutting off the running game there. Second down and 11. It's a great series for your defense. You really had them on the run, literally. It is. Ernest Jones gets uh, credit for the tackle as he tripped Dee Grenier up. Uh, excellent pressure coming up the field there. Uh, Rich Rule misses him, but forces him deeper. And Ernest, with a great effort, grabs the ankle. Down he goes, and uh, Massey's there to make sure that nothing else happens. So it's third down and 25. Quarterback draw. Ernest Jones on a little line twist. Gets the tackle. Two tackles in a row for a loss for Ernest Jones. Had probably his best game of the year. DeGrand, you're fortunate that he didn't get an ankle injury there as it looked like he got twisted over a little bit. You get the ball back, unable to move it, so here comes Tommy in to attempt one from 52. Could have been good from 62. Uh, he drilled that one right down the heart with plenty of distance. No assistance uh, from the wind. So, Oregon leading 13-7. As you can see, about 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. Washington State gets it back on a second and eight play. The Grenier try to get it out to Hicks, and another good play by David Massey. Nice job by Massey. A similar play we saw earlier in the first quarter where we didn't get our linebacker to it, but Massey's a little extra step of speed on this play. Gets him to the back, and a, a sure tackle for a loss. So, third down and 10. Big play here. Just when you seem to have some momentum, you're putting the, uh, yeah. the screws to him a little bit, and boom, pointer gets we're in, loose. We're in man, man coverage underneath. Eugene gets beat underneath, and uh, we miss some tackles. Eugene finally comes back and makes the tackle uh, to save a touchdown, but uh, big play on third down, letting them off the hook. Defense does a great job here. Romeo Bandison tipping that ball. And the, the tackle by Jackson proves to be very important. And Price misses the 28-yard field goal, so Cougars come out of that with no points. He does, but we give it right back to him here. Uh, just a, a real nice job by Patterson. Their defensive end uh, comes up and strips the ball out of Danny's arms, and they run the option here the only time successfully they ran it. They got the pitch off. Our secondary didn't support, and uh, they got a good game. Excellent job. I thought we were going to make a great stand here. Romeo Bandison, John Toma Piao. Fumble a snap, should have had him for a loss here. Sherman misses, we miss a couple tackles down to the two. 
third down, we stop them short. And fourth down, they sneak it. And I'm, I would like to have a great angle of this because I'm not sure the ball ever crosses the plane. You can see right there he's standing up, but the ball's down around his waist, and he's clearly not across. The ball isn't clearly across. And I, it was signaled right away by the flank official on the left of the screen, but uh, I'd like to have a better angle of that one. Great effort by our defense. Yes, it was. Well, Washington State has taken the lead. It's 14-13, but you need a little energy injected, and Ricky Whittle's the man to do it. Ricky comes bursting out of there. Got a little five-yard face mask tacked onto that, but uh, excellent return. See it uh, from right behind Ricky. See the wedge did a great job opening it up. The left side of the wedge, Paul Wigan got a nice block. Eric Barnes leading, couldn't quite get there, so the guy grabbed Ricky. A little bit of a yank on the face mask and let go, so therefore only a five-yarder. So under four minutes to play in the second quarter. Cougars leading by one. Play action, hit Willie Tate crossing. Trying to strip the ball out, can't get it. Uh, we have to set up quick because you can see the containment is there after the play fake. And Danny does a nice job. See him trying to swipe at the football, but he can't get Willie, it to. Willie's got a pretty broad body. It's kind of hard to get that hand clear across on the other side. That's a great reason, though, for carrying the ball in, a, in the arm away from the tackler. Nice job by Sean Burwell taking it up inside. Tack on personal foul penalty against Washington State. And now the ball's at the 10, mark it at the 8. The next play we get, and a big sack. Ray Hall just throws Danny around like a rag doll. So now it's third and 15. Third and 15, big play here. Danny on the play fake, goes into the corner. McLemore gets a foot down, touchdown. And, and that gives Oregon the lead, a lead they would not relinquish. And for that reason, it is our play of the day. And it's a simple play we've used many times, Todd. We're in the eye, tight end left here. We're going to run the play fake. We can fake this play either weak side or strong side. We come to the strong side. Danny comes back and fakes to the tailback, sets back up. McLemore over here at the flanker spot comes in and makes a little move inside and fades back to the outside. And Danny put it up. The defensive back actually was in pretty good shape as he was in the coverage, but McLemore made a great leap and the pass was thrown high and resulting getting a, his foot down. I, you should be able to see this very clearly from this angle. The ball is up high where it can be caught. Left foot down, body down, ground knocks ball loose, touchdown. Go for two. Go for two. He's got Willie Tate open. He just didn't pull the trigger on it, and then he tried to go in the corner to Derek Deadweiler, and we're not successful. They come back with a last second drive, and uh, Romeo Bandison gets a big hand in there, and David Massey can't quite get to it. I just wish that had bounced some other way, but uh, big, big play, obviously, before the half. And so Oregon goes into the locker room, leading Washington State 19 to 14. When we come back, we'll uh, not only have the third quarter highlights, but we'll have a feature on one of the Oregon seniors. Into the third quarter we go. The Ducks leading Washington State 19 to 14, and you get a nice spark here to start the third quarter as well. Yeah, this is a kind of a, become a tradition for Ricky. Drop the kickoff, and then pick it up and make a great run. Uh, excellent job. The kicker Price knocking him out of bounds. Uh, went from uh, thinking disaster as he dropped the ball and tried to scoop it up. Fortunately, got a good uh, pickup there. Nice blocking by the wedge again. Barnes, Wigan. Nice job. Ricky breaks one tackle and gets his field, great field position. We don't immediately capitalize on this, but with the help of the defense, we're able to, to maintain it. Little swing pass on third and four, and they play it very well, and we get a no gain, and we have to punt the ball away. Yeah, it's back and forth as the defenses control play here early in the third quarter. We'll pick out kind of a play from each series to epitomize what happened. Nice job there by Isaac Walker breaking up the pass to Pointer. Ducks get it back, can't move it. Washington State has it again. They can't do anything with it there on the incompletion. Good pressure by uh, Ernest Jones. So now you finally get it back, and this time you are able to do something. Just a great catch there by Derek Deadweiler because as, as uh, we run the play fake, this is a similar 
play pass to the one we did for the play of the day. But O'Neill steps up and he gets hit just as he throws the ball. And it just kind of floats out there. And I didn't think there was any way Derek was going to get to it. He extended his arms, made a great catch to get us out of the hole and give us good field position. Big, big play. And after a holding call against Oregon, second down and 18, another big, long play. This time to Deadweiler. He's in for the score. It was a big play, a uh, little play fake uh, to the top. As you can see, Eric Barnes out in front and getting good protection. The, the defensive back that was covering Deadweiler as Derek made his move, slipped and fell. And this is the reason he's so wide open down there. Perfect pass, nice touchdown. So again, you go for two. Go for two on the quarterback draw. Uh, just short. Must have ruled that his knee was down yeah, because the yeah. ball did cross the goal line, but uh, I think he, he was down before he got it across. So the Ducks now on defense have got that lead. Romeo Bandison came up a little gimpy on this one. He uh, he got clipped unfortunately from behind as he was starting to pursue out after the quarterback, and he injured his ankle. And the severity of that injury won't be known for a couple of days. Just. To <laughs> Pretty hard to corral Ricky Whittle now. He, he hands off. We miss a block at the point of attack. He just spins around and runs the other way and picks up about three or four. Dino Filia on the screen. Nice running by Dino. Hadn't practiced uh, all week on offense, but went right back in. Knew his assignments. Catches the swing pass from O'Neill on a hot pass. They blitzed and nobody was there to cover him. Good block downfield. Uh, by our receiver, and uh, Dino makes a, a big, big play. Gain of 22, first down. First and five now. That's a pretty good pass, and Dino can't quite haul it in. It, uh, it went through his hands. It would have been a great catch. It was right over the top of his head. Now Neil goes back to throw and gets sacked. Unfortunately, he had no chance on this one. We broke down uh, with our right tackle on pass protection, taking us out of what would have been a 54-yard field goal attempt. The option is try it again. Ernest Jones from the front side comes in. You'll see at the, the left side, the top of your screen, Ernest Jones comes in, makes the tackle before a pitch can be made. Second down and 12. Good pressure by Ernest Jones. Thrown out in the flat, but good coverage by Eugene Jackson. And it's for a completion for about a two-yard loss. Sprint out here, nice throw, nice catch for the first down. Just enough for the first down by inches. So first and ten, and the only big breakdown we had, nice run by uh, Washington State. They ran a G play. We got caught up inside a little too tight with our inside backers. We didn't play it very well at the point of attack. And uh, they picked up a big, big game. Good pressure on the quarterback here. Excellent pressure. David Massey coming in, exerting the pressure. Option play again. This time it's Jeremy Asher making the tackle. And that's the final play of the third quarter. So this went far from being over. The Ducks have the lead, but Washington State has the ball. And they're trying to put it in the end zone and cut that deficit. We'll see what happens when we come back. As we pick up play in the fourth quarter, Washington State has the football, and they will get some points. Cut into that Oregon lead. Aaron Price comes in, knocks through a 29-yard field goal, and so with the virtually the entire quarter to play, it's now a 25-17 game. This is called living on the edge right here. Uh, this is a screen pass. We go to an empty formation with Whittle in the backfield, goes out to the tight end, and it's a, it's a wider screen. You can see there's no backs in the backfield. Their linebacker, Childs, reads it, almost picks it, and then I think we're going to get a score, and Whittle does a nice job. But McClanahan just gets an arm on him to slow him down enough uh, for the Washington State pursuit to catch him. Big play, though, when we're backed up after Washington State has just scored. Counter play. Now we're starting to control the line of scrimmage. Eric Barnes, nice block, coming around the corner. Good job by Willie Tate. And uh, Justin Stark at the point of attack. At attack. Paul Wigan, redshirt freshman tackle in there, coming around the corner. Uh, playing, we played uh, Willie Reif uh, in there a lot, and, and Paul Wigan. Pressure, another another screen going back the other way. This time it's to McLemore, 
and he picks up the first down. Similar play to the one we just ran with Whittle. Whittle did go out in motion. It looked like we were going to run the, the same screen to him on the other side, only we came back this time to McLemore. Uh, we have been trying to execute these plays most of the year, but people are playing them much better, and we, we did get two of them uh, to be effective in this game. So you go back to the run. Great mix here. Play calling was uh, very nice on this drive, and the execution good. Great job by Eric Barnes kicking out. Paul Wigan uh, sealing the linebacker. And uh, I think Washington State had not given up a run over 10 yards in the previous four games, and I think we had six or seven over 10 yards in this game. Dino Filia, Ooh, pick up your feet, Dino. Almost got it in the end zone. Well, he didn't there, but he does here. Shedrick. Uh, Leading the way over McClanahan, and Dino's into the end zone, gets his first touchdown ever. Not sure what to do. <laughs> but uh, good line surge, and Shedrick just kind of gives it the extra nudge uh, to get into the end zone. So now you've, you're, you're done with the two point conversions. You're back to just kicking them. That's important because it gives you a 15 point lead 15 instead point of lead. 14. They need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions to take the lead. Uh, well covered there by Jeff Sherman and Isaac Walker, but we didn't strip the ball out. And nice catch by Pointer. Play action fake, fooled the cameraman, goes deep, but did not fool Isaac Walker. Nice play. But the Cougars are able to uh, pick up a first down. And this is a first and ten play. And uh, Eugene Jackson gets beat on a corner route, man-to-man -man coverage. Big first down. And then two plays later, DeGrenier gets on, one. on the hitch for the touchdown. So much of, for relaxing in the fourth quarter here. You, they go for two now because they need those two two-pointers to win. Keep in mind with the uh, importance of this game and the consideration for bowls, uh, both teams' ties didn't do anybody any good in this game. They, they, you had to win this game to uh, really keep your hopes alive. We get a good break here. We don't handle the pooch kick and it gets a like a nine iron with backspin. It, it comes back. Washington State recovered it, but they were offsides and looking at the coaching films, they were clearly a yard offsides when the ball was kicked. Kristen McLemore on the play action pass again. We're not going to play it close to the vest. We're going to come back and try to get some points on the board. Danny O'Neill on the play action pass finds McLemore going cross grain. And it's a big gain before knock, being knocked out of bounds. A gain of 35. Six minutes remaining. Sprint out, go back to the screen pass, to this time to fill yaw. Dino picks up another first down. And so on first and goal. McLemore's second touchdown pass of the year and the first career touchdown for Josh Wilcox. Run the uh, dive fake inside, pitch it back like it's a reverse option. McLemore probably showed pass a little too soon there, but throws it, and Josh Wilcox comes back and makes the catch on the wounded duck uh, and gets his first career touchdown for the uh, redshirt freshman from Junction City. So it's 39 to 23, Oregon. And then the defense seals it for you as Ernest Jones forces the fumble. Great play uh, by Ernest. He Comes in, you'll see at the bottom left of your screen here. He makes the tackle and then gets his hand on the ball right there and rips it out. You see it pop. And I think John Toma Piao, as he was in Seattle, was in the right spot and uh, makes the recovery. So now the Ducks are trying to put it away. Ricky Whittle on the counter play. We had pretty good success running to our right, their left uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, nice job at the point of attack. That time, uh, Christian And Anderson, a redshirt freshman in at tight end, gets a good block. Ricketts out there trying to block at receiver, and we pick up a good game. A couple of plays later on third and 11. The big guy, Wayne Jones. His first touchdown as an Oregon Duck. 240-pound fullback. Gets a great trap block. Tim DeGroote's in there. Bob Baldwin uh, in the line and just lowered the shoulder and just 
Grant, Look at that. Would you want to step up in there? No, I wouldn't. And, and, you know, interestingly, this is still Washington State's first string defense in there. So that's that's a very impressive run by Dwayne Jones. So the Cougars with uh, one final series, and fittingly, the sack. Brian Collins. Derek Barnes is in there first and forced him wide. You can see uh, we've got some redshirt freshmen in there. Derek Barnes forces him wide. Brian Collins comes on the blitz and makes the sack. So that ends it as the Ducks come away with the victory. Very impressive win against Washington State, 46 to 23. Let's check out some of the statistics. First downs, you can see uh, Oregon with the advantage there. Rushing, the Ducks actually had 140 plus, and then the minus yardage brings it back to 98. Keep in mind that the Cougars entered the game uh, allowing well, they were, they were one of the 50, best in the country. 58, 58 yards, yards per game. Yeah. Passing, Danny O'Neill, a great day. The total offense back up over that 400-yard mark. The Ducks continue to lead the conference in that department. Flipping the page. Turnovers, only one apiece for each team. Punting, Thompson had a good day. The, the yardage doesn't reflect uh, the fact that he did a good job. Third down, you see Oregon near 50%. The sacks, four and six. Individually, O'Neill with another wonderful day, the sixth time he's gone over 300 yards passing. That ties him with Musgrave for the all-time lead in that category. DeGrenier, 51 pass attempts for 291 yards. Rush, uh, receiving, McLemore and Whittle leading the day. A, a touchdown for McLemore and one also for Whittle. And in rushing, Whittle picks up 52 yards against that Cougar defense. Defensively, Jackson, Woods, Walker, all with eight tackles apiece, and Jones, the big day, seven tackles, three sacks, five of those tackles for losses. After the game, we talked to some of the players about what happened. Yeah, you know, we were excited to play again. You know, we always do good against Washington State, and uh, we were excited to play. You know, we, we prepared well, and we came out ready to play, and, you know, we played well. Well, just everybody around me just stepped up. Um, again, uh, offensive line just sucked it up big time. My receivers obviously just went off my backs. It was just an incredible day for the offense, and uh, it sure uh, it was just an easy day for me. Uh, everybody around me just made it incredibly easy. Well, coach, uh, he mentioned it to me uh, earlier in the week that I might have to step up and play both ways, and um, you know I really didn't think it you know it would come to pass, but you know it did, and I'm I'm kind of happy that I was. I was ready to go when he when he was at, when I was asked to punt. I'd have to say it was pretty good. You know, uh, finally got a 50-yard through there, and uh, you know, the season I haven't had too many opportunities to do that, and uh, you know, to finally get an opportunity and to put it through really feels good. You know, I've got to I got to give a lot of credit to uh, Mark Gregg and uh, Ryan Perry Smith though. They did a heck of a job of snapping and putting the ball down for me. I guess that was a redemption against UW from UW. Uh, missed the pass. I didn't actually. I didn't go up and get a pass that I should have went up and got, similar to the one in the end zone. I guess I landed my feet in when I hit the ground. That's when the ball came out. I guess I don't know. I thought I caught it when I fell. That's when I just the ball just rolled out, and I, you know, I guess I just jumped up to make it look like it was good. I don't know. I just did what I could do. As for McClanahan and the second rank rushing defense within the nation, it tells you a little bit about our offense. Danny threw for over 300 yards again today, and so our team we're looking up and we're looking to go into the desert and tear up the cat. Whatever their defense is called, Desert Storm, Cactus, Curtain, you know, we're looking to go down there and have fun and enjoy ourselves. And I'm back out here. I'm in a little bit of pain today. Stay tuned to your stations for that, but uh, you can count on us being here for all the highlights next week, so join us then.